Hello and welcome to the third video in my latest VTOL build. Now this is my first ever VTOL that I've personally built. I've had lots of other VTOLs on the channel including things like the OMP Hobby uh, SMO VTOL and of course there was the series that I recorded with Ben up at 3DXR. Ben went through all of the different stages to build a VTOL and that was incredibly useful. Ben is a Jedi Master and the level that he's going through is pretty high. He covered all the important stuff but as those of you who watch my videos know, watching somebody do something on YouTube and doing it yourself are two very very different propositions. So this is a learning experience for me. So if you're watching this series, don't start here, go and start back at the beginning. Links to all this stuff in the description down below. Now, last time we did all the stuff with the Pixhawk. So we flashed it and we set up the airspeed sensor, GPS, and did the basic stuff. It's exactly the same with the exception of turning the quad plane stuff on as all my other Pixhawk series. The next part, which is the one I'm going to talk about this time, is fitting the motors and props, the other bits to the model as well. Now this isn't something that you can do and you can just kind of fudge it. You do have to put a little bit of thought into it. I do hope as time goes on we get more models that come with VTOL option kits that you can snap into place that are ready to rock and roll. But as I probably heard me say already in the videos if you've been watching the series, this is very much a Frankenstein build for me. It's using stuff I have here to figure all this stuff out. And then once I feel like I've got a real handle on it, we can do some stuff with maybe the smaller models, little five, seven inch quadcopter motors. Remember that the Ardu pilot documentation is the absolute best place to go. And if you are thinking of doing this, I wouldn't recommend this as a first build if you haven't done any Ardu pilot fixed wing or Ardu pilot quadcopter stuff in the past. I would do one of those first, get to grips with the interface, how it all works and then you're away. The quad plane stuff in particular is a little bit complicated only because it's all based in the CLI stuff. There's no nice point and click interface yet inside things like Mission Planner. So the first thing we'll talk about are the ESCs and motors. This is probably condensing about 10 days worth of playing around, designing 3D printed parts, doing measurements and calculations. But let me kind of condense this down to make it easier. Because when you are putting the motors and props on a model, there are three main things that you want to make sure you can do. First of all is have the lift motors away from the fixed wing motor. So the motors aren't going to hit each other, obviously. But also, if you remember in the other series that we talked about, one of the big challenges is getting the central gravity to remain in the right place under the wing for the fixed wing. Central gravity for fixed wing is incredibly important. Five, ten millimeters off can make a really beautiful plane fly like a pig. So we don't want to mess up the flight characteristics of the plane. We want the central gravity to be in the right place. And that means that the middle of the distance between the two motors needs to be pretty much on where the central gravity is under the wing. And the last one that I didn't really think about was the fact that the boom itself needs to be angled a little bit. Now, if we look at a close-up of the MFE fighter that Ben was building in his series, you can see that the prop uh, the boom at the back is actually angled to come up through the wing. So the angle of the wing versus the angle of the boom that holds the VTOL motors is different. It's actually at an angle itself. Now this meant for me that I had a couple of goes of designing and 3D printing the brackets for this. Because initially I was just going to have it flat and then we were going to figure it out later on. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought, you know what, we probably need to take care of this. So here is the kind of maths that I did to try and figure all this stuff out. So I know where the central gravity is on the wing. I know how far back from the leading edge it is. I know how big the wing is. So the wing is seven and a half inches deep. Apologies for doing everything in inches. It's just because the prop dimensions are in inches. And if I keep it all in that, it's going to make it easy for the math. So the rear prop has to be about five inches away from the rear edge of the wing, the trailing edge of the wing, so that the prop is in clean air. That means then that there is five inches between the motor mount and the back of the wing, and then we know that there's another little bit of distance between the back of the wing and the central gravity. That needs to be the same distance 
from the CG line forward as well. So by working that out, I can figure out that the whole boom for the two motors needs to be about 19.8 inches. I think I made it 20 inches just for simplicity. So once I'd figured out it was a 20 inch boom, then the rest of it was relatively easy. The 15 millimeter tube that I ordered from 3DXR, unfortunately they didn't have any of the 16 millimeter that I needed in stock, meant that I had to wrap some tape over the end of the tube in order for it to fit the Hollybro motor mounts that I had. Now I have modified the motor mounts with some 3D printed parts underneath. Again, I designed these things so that it means that the ESC can run along outside the tube. The reason for that is that the ESC is designed to fit inside 60 millimeter tube but unfortunately I couldn't get hold of that. So with those two things figured out I could design and print the brackets. Again I've made the brackets 10 millimeters deeper at the front than at the back to try and give me that little bit of angle because in theory if this angle is right and it might not be it could be completely wrong I'm just guessing at this point what the attitude of the thing will be in flight. It means that when I do everything up, the boom will be kind of straight and level. Now, one of the things that I realized when I was doing this is that it, everything was still a little bit wobbly and we need it as firm as we possibly can. Now, obviously the wings on this Atom RC seal that I'm using here aren't designed to hold motors and props. So what I did is I cut a channel and then sunk a carbon spar into that channel uh, use black tape to cover it up so it doesn't look as hideous but I did run it under the rear support for the boom for the motors and that will hold the end of it in place to stop it popping out probably going to put a little carbon fiber extension through the body itself for those two pieces to plug into but that should hopefully give me enough rigidity I will find out whether it is enough when I go and fly because if the motors are flopping about as they try and keep the craft level we're going to get some horrible oscillations if that isn't enough then I could laminate the wing and, and laminate the wings into the body and do some other strengthening we'll see if that is enough but the way it came definitely felt a little bit too loose and I might also actually glue the wing into the root uh, the wing root into the actual body of the model itself that might be something that I have to do I've been trying to make it so that I could take off this VTOL piece and just have it as a regular plane but I think I might have to bite the bullet and fix it properly to stop things moving around. The next thing to do once I'd figured all that out and mounted the motors was to make up a power loom. So that's going to take the power from the battery via the current sensor for the Pixhawk and then that's going to provide the power into the back part of the model for the ESC for the fixed wing prop but also have these long flying leads that terminate in XC30s that are going to plug into the motors out on the wings. All those cables will be just covered with some tape once I run them under the wings just to try and help uh, with a little bit of the aerodynamics. Last things to do then was to make up a couple of extension cables for the ESCs. Uh, the trick that I'm using here is every single servo connection that I'm putting together I'm writing on as I'm doing it where they go to and where they should plug in at both ends. That means that when I get the Pixhawk ready next time in the next video and we start plugging things in, it's obvious where it all has to connect because we already know what the output mapping is because we did that last time. The big thing with this, of course, is to make sure that the central gravity is in the right place. It's in the middle of the bar between the two motors, and that's going to be about where the central gravity on the wing is as well. That's really important. And also, we need to make sure that the motor direction is the right way too. Our do pilot is expecting a certain way round, and it's easy when you're getting into the minutiae of how you put all this thing together to get distracted. So do keep that diagram on a screen somewhere while you're doing all this so that you don't end up putting all it all together and wiring everything up and realize that you've got the clockwise and counterclockwise motors in the wrong place. So that was the most complicated part of the build so far for me. It's something I've never done before and it's quite 
a chunky installation those pretty big props hopefully it's going to be still enough to get this thing into the air when it's all finished it already feels relatively chunky as a model so i really hope i can stay under my kind of 1.2 kilogram weight limit with a flight battery there are two other pieces that need to be installed into the model. The first is the GPS compass unit. That's the one that's connected via the CAN bus. Now, there is an obvious place on the back of the model that's designed for a GPS, and that was one that I lost a canopy from the first time I ever flew this thing. So I took an X-Acto knife, placed the GPS on top, and very gently scored the outer diameter and then just use the exacto knife to take away the foam and that's going to sit on top here probably use a little bit of hot glue just to keep that in place obviously making sure that it's perfectly aligned with that arrow pointing forwards in the same orientation as the pix hook when we do that next time the other thing that i've had to put on here is obviously the airspeed sensor as I mentioned in the other videos, having an airspeed sensor on a VTOL is a really important thing. That's something that I learned from Ben. Being able to figure out the point at which the wings are creating lift and the wings, the point at which the wings are going to stall is really important because you can have your prop assist and also it'll help with your transitions as well. Now the airspeed sensor needs to be proud and in clean air now what i mean by that is you don't want it too close to the model and there aren't many places on here that i can have it sticking out maybe the leading edge of a wing ideally you want it kind of an inch inch and a half you want both the holes and the other thing that you have to be careful of is not mounting it above or below the model and the reason that i say that is uh, i've heard some horror stories of people getting into trouble where they've mounted it on the top of the model and as the model's pitching up it actually obscures the airflow into the airspeed sensor the airspeed sensor starts to read wrong and all kind of uh, excitement ensues so i've just put mine straight out the front um, i have bored a hole through the foam i'm not going to mount it in there and actually glue it what i'm going to do is have it so that in transport it can be pushed in for safety and then i can just push it forward so it's proud in nice clean air when i'm ready to fly and that means as i pitch up and down as i'm flying it's always going to be getting a nice healthy speed reading the only last thing that I may do is install some telemetry radios. I'm really thinking about this. There's a hole on the side of the Atomasi Dolphin that would be perfect for the telemetry antenna. That would allow me to have the model connected to the laptop while it's flying. And that would allow me to kind of monitor and do some other funky stuff as well. So I might put that in, but we'll see how the weight goes. So this, as I said, is probably about 10 days condensed down. Every time I wanted to do something, I found that I didn't have screws of that length or that particular thing or the 3D printed part that I needed. I needed to tweak the design and reprint them. But it has been a lot of fun and I've learned an awful lot. Next time I do it, now I know how to figure out how long the boom needs to be so it can sit on the central gravity and the props can be nice and clear. Um, it's going to be an awful lot easier and hopefully that's useful for you too kind of figuring out how i have put all this together so join me next time let's actually start plugging things into the pixhawk and seeing if we can get control surfaces to move and we can get motors to fire up and calibrate as well so thanks for watching and hopefully i'll see you in the next video where we get into the guts of plugging the pixhawk into all these pieces i've just installed Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.